hello guys welcome back to my channel if you're new to my channel hello and welcome to my channel my name is summer so i don't know a lot of you if you know about this pastor i will share the video i sh i i shared about him previously about he was in the news and i covered that story then but let me read to you guys this story about him facing deportation right so this is the mirror mirror uk this is not backyard you know what i mean this is the news as it is okay it says pastor toby adegbeyega 44 has lost his deportation battle so pastor whose church was shut down over alleged 1.87 million fraud loses deportation battle an immigration tribunal ruled that toby adegbeyega the cousin of star wars actor john bayo boyega should be deported back to nigeria after he was found to be misusing funds by his church the nigerian person has lost his deportation battle after his church was shut down over an alleged 1.87 million fraud despite him claiming the move would breach his human rights an immigration tribunal ruled that 44 year old toby adegboyega the cousin of star war actor john boyega uh, Boyega should be deported back to Nigeria after he was found to be uh, oh, repeating themselves now to be misusing funds by his church. Mr. Adeboyega, head of the controversial Spark Nation Church, failed to properly account for more than 1.87 million of our is a lot, though. Is a lot. Having married a British woman, he claimed deportation would breach his right under the European Convention of convention of human rights to a family life and that the home office would be failing to acknowledge his communities his community work with spark he goes on to say his legal team said the charismatic in quote community leader had in quote again intervened in the lives of many hundreds of young people predominantly from the black community in london to lead them away from trouble end of quote then go on he says mr i'm reading it word for word so it's not like i'm not narrating the story and you know what i mean okay he says mr adeboyega also claimed praise from politicians like boris johnson as well as senior figures within the metro metropolitan police uh, but no testimonies were submitted to the court but the tribunal was told the home office contended all in quote all is not as it seems End of quote. According to judgment, various manifestations of Mr. Adeboyega's church have been closed down by either the Charity Commission or the High Court because of concerns over its finances and lack of transparency. Okay. Then further down, it says, former members of the church have alleged that it is a court in which impoverished young people are encouraged to do anything they can to donate money, including taking out large loans, committing benefit fraud and even selling their own blood i will post the old story that went round so you guys can get more details about this it is alleged that the church leader led lavish lifestyles and they have it is said been instances of abuse anyways you know i've covered this story before right guys i'm gonna put now i'm gonna add the video that i've made about this story about how uh, about this story about this um 1.87 million fraud thing i'm going to add it here so that you guys will get an understanding those of you that don't know the story of what exactly happened then um i'll let you guys watch this hello guys and welcome back to my youtube channel if you're new to my channel hello and welcome to my channel my name is summer so in this video i want to talk about this story that came out about this uh, nigerian uh, guy that lives in the uk uh, it's called a pastor toby their church is called spark nation or whatever that they said they've been shut down by the uk government for alleged fraud let me just you know what let me read to you guys how it is on the news uk news so because uk news they don't come and publish something carelessly because they know they can be sued if their information is not correct right it's not like nigeria the story will be like this be like this this is uk news right let me read it to you guys and then i'll discuss a few things that i want to say about this and um, this is the uk independent and it says uh, i'll put a link you guys can go read the full i'll just read some part, part of it spark nation uh church shut down by government following fraud allegations okay um the church once held by the uk 
politicians as a beacon of hope for ex-gang members was hit by allegations of financial exploitation of its members in 2019. You know, let me actually stop here because let me say something because this, uh, I watched a video he posted on his Instagram saying something about oh, the black church, you know, but from what I'm getting from that, he's making it look like it comes across like, oh, they are coming for us because we are a black church or whatever. One, a church should not be black or white. Christianity has no race. You know, let's stick with the truth and you understand, forget about sentiment or whatever. Let's just focus on what is correct and what is incorrect. There's no, there shouldn't be a black or white church. That's that. But then at the same time, I just saw that I feel like the racist card being played here. Oh, because we're black or whatever. But you see, when you look at their story and look at some things, you see that there was a time when they were praised. There were times when he was at the front of Downing Street taking pictures and the people in Parliament recognizing because he said he was bringing people out of life of crime and bringing them to, you know, a different life or whatever. He was praised for all of that. He was spoken about it positively. But then he didn't say, oh, they are doing it to us. They are recognizing us. They are praising us because we are black. You see now that they are finding faults with them that they now say uh, because we are black. You get my point? If they were not racist to that church, when the church was being praised for doing things that were seen as positive, so now that they are not seeing this and they see as negative, we're not going to accuse them of being racist? Right? Let me leave that. Let me leave that. Okay, let's keep reading. So this is actually uh, by Nadine White. I actually came across a video and uh, by this Nadine, I will put a link where she spoke a lot about this uh, Spark Nation church before this happened, I think a year or two years ago, that she had investigated this church in the past, right? Okay, let me just read on. And it says, a controversial church has been shut down after failing to properly account for more than 1.87 million of outgoings and operations with a lack of transparency. That's a lot of money. The Bible tells us that there are some things that should not be mentioned among us Christians. And you see, it's not the first time a Nigerian preacher or pastor has been accused or there's been allegations. There was time there was, it was Christ Embassy. I think there was a time it was uh, Matthew Ashimolowo. We know not too long ago there was this uh, Pandora Papers, something like that. And uh, Oyedepo was mentioned. It's not the first time that some Nigerian pastors have been mentioned. You see, Nigeria is anyhow, anyhow. They can get away with whatever. UK is organized society. It's easy for them to be investigated or whatever. And another thing I want to say that I have noticed, when a political party wins and becomes a governor or the whatever, you notice how some churches try to quickly befriend the new governor, befriend the new kini, the new president, befriend the new local government chairman, what befriend all the people in politics, the head of police or whatever. When they befriend them, tomorrow when there is controversy, the people in power are now, it's like their hands are tied because, you know, this is, is no longer just a governor versus one pastor being accused, it becomes like friends. You notice that this guy somehow, from what I have seen, it seems that he put himself up to already be respected or, how do I say it, seen in a good way and uh, spoken positively about a lot of politicians that I, I don't know why, because I, I feel like sometimes some of these things happen because it's like once I get these people good name on that them, then if anything happened, I already have a good name. You, you know what I mean? But it doesn't, this kind of thing they don't really work in the UK. They don't do friendship and forget investigation that needs to be done. Okay, let me read on. And then it says um, 1.87 million is not more and more pounds, not naira, pounds, right? And then it goes on to say, Spark Nation, known as Salvation Proclaimer Ministry, that's what this Spark stands for, uh, Limited, was wound up in the High Court on the 9th of June 2022 before Judge Bolton, government agency, the insolvency service announced on Friday. And then it says, the church once hailed by the UK politicians as a beacon of hope for ex gang members was hit by allegations of financial exploitation and safeguarding abuses of its members, which it denied. Then the church denied it and says his congregation is mainly comprised of young black people from impoverished communities if you go watch there i have seen that guy a few times you know sometimes you're like i don't want to talk this one if i talk now people will say one thing one thing one and then this now came up that makes me okay let me actually say i'm going to be honest right when i watch see that guy and i see 
this Instagram life thing that he's promoting or showing off or whatever. I'm always wondering where is God in that? Where is Jesus in this? Where is Christ in it? What part of this now is actually Christianity? I've seen some of their, the YouTube videos where they say this is their pastors. There was one I watched, a female pastor, and she's showing, I think it's her house, and she's going around the camera, and she went into the bedroom and say, she's showing them the designer outfits and the designer shoes and all of those things. And I'm like, what? Another one I saw is another, a male pastor this time. He's showing the building, he's showing the swimming pool, he's showing this and showing bedroom as well and he says something like you know some people will see this video he sh i think that was his bedroom he said it's a presidential suite or whatever he called it and he said you know some people watch this video and said oh if only i can touch the hem of his pillow and you see it's all about promoting luxury and vanity and stuff like that the bible talked about if only i can touch the hem of his garment for healing for something meaningful not but you see how this one said it if i can touch you know he knows who will be looking at looking at this video and say if only they can touch the hem of his uh, pillow or hem of his pillowcase or something like that honestly i look at all of that and i'm saying which part of this is actually christianity i watch all of all they talk about growth financial growth financial growth level of like your level in life changing and, that. and i'm like where is jesus it's something that i want to say before i forget if somebody is presenting you something that you, you look at it and you're asking yourself let me tell you for example the way they i see their presentation of their church is about come and become rich it's motivational speech come and your life will change you will no longer be poor christianity is not about money if christianity is about money uh, you know get people out of poverty and stuff like that then you have no message for bill gate you have no message for somebody like dangote if christianity is about telling people come so you can make money then you have no message for those that already have money christianity is about coming to taste and say that the lord is good coming so that your soul can be saved coming so that you can make heaven and that is the message for the poor the rich the mighty the whatever it is a message for everybody. The message these people are preaching is a message for the poor and say, come out of poverty. It's not come out of your life of sin. We know the song where they said, great chances I met the Lord. Things I used to do, I do them no more. I used to steal, I steal no more. I used to do this, I do them no more. I used to drink, I used to be drunk, I'm drunk no more. I used to whatever. It should be that. And you see that that is the message that is for everybody, regardless of your social status, regardless of whatever. People are preaching a message that is not about Christianity. Christianity is about following the life and teachings of Christ. I've said it before in one of my videos. If you look at a pastor and you are looking and the life does not reflect the life of Christ, you have to ask yourself, what Christianity are they talking about? If the pastor's life is completely different from the life of Christ, ask yourself, what Christ are they representing? What God sent them? I'll say it again. Like they said now, its congregation is mainly comprised of young black people from impoverished community, promising them this, promising them that. The allegation was plenty. I saw the interview with that freeze, and he's trying to explain it. And I'm still lost. I'm not getting any of the things he's saying. I'm reading from a reputable news organization from the UK, right? And um, impoverished. Another thing I want to say about the black impoverished children, a lot of the black people will be from the Caribbean and uh, like descendants, Africans and whatever. And they come from a society where, you know, their parents already grew up too. And their children grew up in these homes where, you know, it's still that message of prosperity gospel is there in the Caribbean. Prosperity come to God so that your money can double, give so that God can give you more and all of that. And you will find that children from those households where their parents are in that line of that mentality will be easily lured into stuff like that. Because when they said it's mainly, and we have seen it, it's mainly black children. There are a lot of civilized part of the world where if you come and tell them, come to church where so you can make money, they will laugh you out of the building. Because to them, to make money is go and get a job, get a degree, get a training. But African mentality, a lot of black people mentality that comes with that, you know, just come to church, oh God will just give you money. You know, manna will fall from heaven. Just come to church, then give this, God will double it. God will give you money you did not expect. Strange money is coming your way. Money you did, like money will just fall. But these white people, and I'm thinking that's why, I'm thinking. That means what I think. I may not be right, but I'm thinking that maybe that's why that they, they don't have a lot of the white children 
you know, in their churches because they grew up in homes with parents that have that mentality of you work, you make money. You go to a job, you may go and get a degree, go and get a training. You have to work for money to come. Money does not fall from heaven. So those kind of children may not be easily lured. But African children that grew up in homes where their parents were the first generation or the second generation of lured people can easily fall for this. Impoverished children. The gospel is not for the poor. It's for everybody. Both the rich and the poor, the high and the low. Everybody. Spark Nation's recent financial statements set out £610,000 of rent expenditure. However, the company did not have a base of its own and hired venues across London to hold services at significant expense, the court heard. Right? And then it says, Edna Okiria, chief investigator for the insolvency service, said, Why Spark Nation claimed it had noble intentions to support vulnerable and young people our inquiries uncovered a different side of the charity and it says there were clear concerns around how the church group managed its affairs and spark nation failed to properly account for income received from donations and other expenditures so he, um, he made a post on instagram and he said something like i can't remember exactly how he phrased it but something like you cannot be perfect in account filing i was like bro come on what do you what does that mean you cannot be perfect in account filing who could you fear god's more now that is why you hire an accountant accountants went to school and they studied accounting they studied bookkeeping and all of these things so that they can do their jobs well so this one is not saying you cannot be initially in that the freeze uh, platform he was saying something about the company name we used to use we don't use that company anymore that is the one that is this the company and i'm like how many company 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 are we talking about why does it sound like they, there are many of them and at the same time saying you cannot be perfect you see this youtube where they play play they play play the, even the money that comes out of this youtube i pay taxes on it all i have to do but not a youtube i get an accountant i'll be like okay this is what came out of it how much of it is a tax and he will look, the accountant do all the calculations. They tell me what I have to pay. I pay it. Guess what? If I don't even pay it, God may not go, no. For those that know, no, I'm a nurse. Like when I started this thing, you know, I go to my job, I come, I do this. You know, my income comes from here. My income comes from there. The system knows me as a nurse. And that's where they're expecting my taxes to come from. What I'm making from here. You see, if I finish and they say your tax is whatever, small, big, whatever. And I pay an accountant for that. Ordinary this one. And you're managing a church that is... They're talking about millions and millions and you are saying you cannot be perfect in accounting that's why you hire an accountant if i can hire an accountant for this kind of thing why not for a, a church now you say you cannot be perfect in accounting your imperfection is up to 1.8 million who could you fear god's more now it's not like a ten thousand or something 1.8 million we cannot be perfect or say somebody like nobody can be perfect in account whatever way he said it if it was something like 100 pounds or let's say 10,000 pounds or something minor something whatever 1.8 this imperfection of 1.8 is a lot at least let's fear god no matter what there were clear concerns around how the church group managed its affairs and spark nation failed to properly account for the income received from donations and other expenditure and then he goes on to say the court recognized the severity of spark nation's actions and this sends a strong message that proper records and accounts must be maintained even if you are a charity you know it shows you guys this is uk is not nigeria you can't do anyhow if you do anyhow you will see anyhow that is the message there, and that's why a lot of Nigerian churches have been implicated in the UK before. But they never get implicated in Nigeria. And then they come to the UK because the, the UK is not anyhow country. He said after allegations about the church came to light, having been first reported by a uh, Huff Post UK, the Metropolitan Police and Charity Commission launched investigation into its activities, which are ongoing. And then he says at that time there were claims pastors allegedly pressured young people in the congregation to sell their blood to raise funds. I've heard about that in the past. They said, from what I understand, though, is like there was a the particular. I never knew that was even a thing in the UK where they donate their blood and they give them like a hundred pounds or something. The allegation is that this church were they were telling church members that they, to sell their their own blood to raise funds in a practice referred to as bleeding for seed. So basically, they go donate their blood. The money they get, they give to the church. How does that sound? 
this is an allegation okay let me read on because i think there's more to read he said do an organization can be forced to administratively uh, close and cease to exist under that name on the company's house register companies can appear under a different name and this has previously been known to happen so they are accusing him this is the accusation that they start with a one name so if the government shut one down they can start with the other name and i noticed in that the freeze interview he kept on saying it's a name we don't use anymore guys go and watch that video i'll put that that the freeze interview here again so you guys can check it out something like he said that's the name we use that we don't use that anymore we don't even care we don't use that anymore something like there was way he was saying it and when i read this and i said okay that is it looks like strategy is that what Christianity is about? I'm throwing this as a question out there. Is this what Christianity should be about? Okay, let me read more. And then it says, um, a company that's linked to the organization registered as Park Nation on Company's House was incorporated in May 2019 and remains active with accounts overdue. Spark Nation rebranded as uh, X Nation Family in june 2020 a month after head pastor toby adeboyega announced he was stepping down as leader though he has remained at the helm of the organization then he says the court heard that spark nation was incorporated in 2012 as a charity set up to advance christianity much of its charitable work was based in london working particularly with vulnerable people youth and offenders the insolvency service received complaints about spark nation before instigating its own inquiries into the church group's activities further inquiries found that spark nation either failed to comply or only partially complied with statutory requirements including providing data to support claimed donations and accounting records to support 1.87 million of spending that is a lot of money it was also recognized that the company provided inconsistent information to the insolvency service and charity commission and failed to deliver adequate accounting records investigators interviewed one of the company's directors adegboyega who was also known as dapo adegboyega pastor dapo or simply the brother of toby adegboyega during interviews mr adegboyega said that the church group had over 2000 members and 200 ordained ministers and pastors but failed to provide any supporting information he also stands accused of previously calling a congregation member at the london branch of world evangelism bible church webeck into taking out a hundred thousand mortgage loan to buy a building but never materialized before moving to spark nation you know so when you see there has been so many allegations of they tell them there was even a video i watched where they said um, was it the guy was saying that they told them they were even encouraging them to fake a car accident so that they can catch out on insurance and then bring to the church these are the allegations the allegations are too many at the end of the day before if you feel like oh yeah why are people are attacking pastors blah, 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 you have to sit back this video i'm just showing you whatever information is out there it's left to you what you do with it and um, the truth is this it's a good thing that christianity is free for all everybody is free to come in everybody is so open you can come you can go you can stay you can whatever it's not forced on anyone unfortunately that is what i believe that well, that is what it is that ends up being abused Anybody can come up and say, I'm a pastor, and come up and use one Bible verse to tell people this is this or this is that, that, that. It makes it so free for all. And that is why allegations of exploitation can even come up. Anybody can come up and claim, the Lord told me that you should do this, the Lord told me you should do that, and or whatever. I wanted to share this because this pastor has been on social media for basically his extravagant life and him talking about money and talking about look at me i'm wearing this look at my car look at my this look at my that i personally have always looked at him and i'm like where is jesus in this okay okay i hear what he's saying okay but where is jesus you're waiting for the point where you hear about jesus about god about christianity and you're hearing things that are just for the world things are just motivational speech and look at me look at my life look at my days that's not what christianity is about christianity is, is not about that like i always say if you don't know what christianity is look at jesus and the life of christ let me tell you christianity is following the life and teachings of christ what did jesus teach us what did he practice what life did he live what life did he practice what did he show us my example the bible says, looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of your faith not unto a pastor's if you look at people and their lives are not reflecting what Christ came to do, you have to wonder 
what Christianity are they talking about? This story came up and I just said, let me just quickly come and make a video about it. And just to lay it out there, it's left for you what you want to believe. I'm just going to show you what the, this is what is on the news. Okay, if he says that they are lying on him, then he has to sue this publication. There are a lot of newspapers that publish this story in the UK. Then he has to go sue them for defamation or for lying or whatever you want to call it. This is what reputable newspapers have to say about what the story is. I know he has tried to do his own explanation, which I'm sorry, I watched this video I, or whatever response is given and I haven't been able to sink my teeth into anything that would kind of make more sense to it. But uh, I said, let me come and make a video about it and just to show you guys what's out there in the news. As always, whatever your opinions are, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And with that, I'm going to say thank you for watching. Until the next time, guys. Bye-bye.